Hi everybody, having covered expansionary monetary policy in lots of detail, let's do exactly the same now for contractionary monetary policy via an increase in interest rates, focusing on the pros and cons of this policy. Let's start by looking at the pros. Well, one of the major reasons why central banks around the world will look to raise interest rates is to reduce inflation. Bear in mind, we know central banks, a lot of them, have got inflation targeting mandates. So by raising interest rates, in theory, aggregate demand will come down, as the diagram shows, helping to bring down demand pull inflation. Now, if inflation is above target, this is a desirable thing. But let's evaluate by saying, what if there is cost push inflation driving inflation in an economy via an increase in world commodity prices? Well, higher interest rates don't bring down oil prices or gas prices or metal prices, do they? So there's your evaluation, less effective in bringing down cost push inflation. But central banks have to be seen to be doing something when inflation is out of control and above target. Raising interest rates at least can keep a lid on inflation expectations. So if it's not just raising rates to reduce inflation, why else would central banks increase interest rates? Well, two very novel arguments coming your way. Central banks could raise interest rates to discourage household and corporate debt. And we know how that happens. Higher interest rates that increase the cost of borrowing discourage debt, right? But why is that a good thing? Well, to understand that, reverse everything. Let's assume interest rates are very low and they've been very low for a prolonged period of time. Naturally, that's going to encourage a lot of debt both households and businesses. The concern though is what if these guys see a change in their financial circumstances where they can't afford to repay those loans? Of course, there'll be negative implications on them, but worse, you might argue, there are big negative implications on the banks themselves who can't recoup those loans, risking bank failure, insolvency. Now, when banks fail, they tend not to fail in isolation. The banking sector is very interdependent, where one bank failure can ripple across the entire sector and bring down lots of other banks, bringing down the whole sector, a phenomenon known as systemic risk, guaranteeing a recession in the economy. So by raising interest rates and discouraging household and corporate debt, you're actually taking away some of the pressure on the banking sector, reducing the chance of bank failure and systemic risk, reducing the overall risks of recession. Really novel argument there. So is this one. Raising interest rates can promote more sustainable borrowing and lending. Well, only those individuals who need to borrow and can afford to borrow a higher interest rates actually enter the market. Again, to understand the benefit of that, flip things the other way around again. So imagine interest rates have been very low for a long period of time. Anybody can access that market, whether they need to borrow, whether they're good borrowers or not. Even bad borrowers can enter a market like that where job security is very poor, where credit histories are bad, where deposits aren't paid when loans are taken out. Even those guys can enter a market when interest rates are so, so low. Anybody can afford to borrow when interest rates are super low. The danger is if economic growth is built on unsustainable borrowing, which leads to consumption and investment, a bubble is formed. A bubble is economic talk whenever something is unsustainable. So you get credit bubbles, but also if a lot of borrowed money goes into the housing market or other assets, you get an asset price bubble, a housing market bubble, unsustainable growth of house prices there. The problem with bubbles, anything unsustainable, it can't last over time. And when those bubbles burst, you get guaranteed recessions in the economy. So again, by raising interest rates, you're encouraging more sustainable borrowing and lending. Only those that need to borrow, that can afford to borrow, will enter the market. And that means you're less likely to get unsustainable growth, borrowing fueled consumption and investment. You get more consumption from saving, more investment from profit. That's good news. That growth can continue long term in the economy but also you're less likely to get asset price bubbles. So that means less chance of bubbles, less chance of recessions. Really, really novel argument, both of those. Let's keep going though. So higher interest rates can also encourage more saving. Interest rates are also the rate of return for savers. So by encouraging more saving, those who are living off their savings are gonna see high living standards. Think pensioners, the early retired, the economically inactive, the unemployed, but even those who are saving to reach financial goals are able to reach those goals faster. Good news for them. Saving also means greater investment, but saving is also a safety net for households and businesses that get into financial difficulty. So lots of benefits of encouraging more saving there. At the same time, higher interest rates might mean more affordable housing. By increasing the cost of mortgages, you can cool down demand for housing. And that might mean lower house prices or at least 
uh, reducing the rate of growth of house prices, making it more affordable for first time buyers to access the market, for low income families to enter the housing market, to get on the housing ladder is a good thing for their living standards. Yes, but also a good way to reduce wealth inequality and improve social mobility. Higher interest rates that reduce AD can also help to reduce a current account deficit by reducing incomes. You can lower spending on imports, but also raising interest rates can mean you've now got the space for interest rate cuts in the next crisis, in the next recession, a fundamental argument. You've got that space to cut rates when you need to in the next crisis for expansionary monetary policy in that regard. But there are some major cons of raising interest rates. Let's consider those now. Well, definitely the biggest con that central banks will be so wary of is shocking the economy into a recession on the demand side, a demand side shock by raising interest rates, discouraging consumption, discouraging investment, strengthening the exchange rate, all of which can reduce aggregate demand and lead to recessionary outcomes with lower growth and higher cyclical unemployment. The diagram below makes that very clear. This is a trade off that central banks would look to avoid. And it's a huge concern if it occurs. So central banks have to be wary of these trade offs of macroeconomic objectives. But also now we can worry about the individual impact on the indebted, whether they're households or businesses. If interest rates go up and it's more expensive now to service that debt, it's harder to repay loans that households and businesses have. What could that mean? Well, for households, it might mean bankruptcy and homelessness. We can worry about the impact on living standards. For businesses, if they can't afford to repay their business loans, it could mean business bankruptcy and rising unemployment. Again, we can worry about the impact on living standards there. Higher interest rates reduce business investment, don't they? By increasing the cost of borrowing, you are taking away the incentive for businesses to borrow and fund their investment projects. This is bad news for short run and long run growth. We know investment is a core part of the AD equation, but investment is also a major LRAS determinant. So bad news for growth, but also investment boosts productivity and competitiveness. So detracting investment is the last thing you want to see in an economy. Higher interest rates certainly can do that. But also higher interest rates can actually worsen a current account deficit. Good eval to what we said earlier by strengthening the exchange rate. Let's remind ourselves how that works. So if interest rates are high, that can lead to hot money inflows. So imagine in the UK, interest rates are rising and are higher relative to other countries in the world. That will mean that you will see hot money inflows. Hot money is savings that chase the best interest rate internationally. So if the UK now has the best interest rate, savings from abroad will now flood into the UK, into UK financial institutions. And when that money is saved in the UK, that will be saved in pounds, increasing the demand for the pound, increasing the value of the pound, strengthening the pound. And from a strong pound, we know imports become cheaper, exports become more expensive, become dearer. There is a link to a worsening current account deficit from there. So that guys covers all the major pros and cons of raising interest rates, a really fascinating discussion, some very deep ideas in this. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you took that all down. I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.